We're going to talk about tail swing and a couple of other things that we learned as a result of me crunching the back of our trailer. Plus some important changes you might want to make to your insurance. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing and we are trying to live amazing if you are regular viewers of our channel you know that we crunched our rig not too long ago i um, crunched <laughs> the rig yeah and we're recovering from that and we're learning a lot from that so this video we want to share with you some lessons that we learned as we dig deeper into this and plus some kind of surprising things we learned about our insurance so, well, yeah, let's where get do we started. Start? Well, first of all, um, I guess we should, you know, mention that we have did, done the video about the crash. And if you haven't seen it, you will have it below. And then we did a follow up to kind of talking about accommodations and how to find a good repair shop on the road. Because if you don't know it, Paul and I are full timers. We've yeah. been on the road for two and a half years. When this thing goes in the shop, so goes our home. After we had this accident, we had hundreds of people chime in that they had done the same thing. So if you're new to camping, this could happen to you. That's why we think it's really important to educate about what tail swing is. How, how to, to calculate it, basically. Right, and account for it if you're you know, driving by gas pumps <laughs> like we were. Apparently gas stations are magnets for accidents. And we have heard from someone who works at a gas station, accidents happen almost once a week. Yeah, and it doesn't surprise me. I was doing some research on this. I found this one post that said that if you measure from the center of your rear wheel to the back and then divide that by three, so let's say you have 12 feet from the center of your rear wheel to the back of the rig. If you divide that by three, you've got four. And that's what they're saying. Okay, you've got four feet of tail swing. That's not what we found when we did our research. How much of a pivot you do yes. um, is going to affect it. I, and so we're gonna show you how we measured ours and give you some tips for measuring yours. And just know that the way the camper swings is opposite in the direction you're turning. Yes, tail swing is always going to be on the blind side and that's what makes it so, so dangerous i don't know if that's the right word <laughs> and common yeah yeah and common and a common cause of accidents so let's say you pull up to a gas pump with your camper you've got a, a, a camper trailer and the gas pumps are on your left if you leave the gas pump to make a right turn like we did your camper is going to swing the opposite direction it's going to swing towards the pumps right. so a good rule of thumb is if you have something Whatever side it is to your camper, whether it's a fence or a post or, you know, a campsite, a thing, wall, a wall, whatever. Yeah, you're you parked next to a building and, and you're going to turn and you're going to turn out at, at a pretty sharp angle. You've got to take tail swing into account there. Right. But if the object is on your left side, it's better for you to actually if once you know to actually make a left turn because the tail swing is going to swing the away away from the object whatever yes. it is yes okay another tip is before you get started you want to walk around the rig if there are two of you the best thing and this is something that Paul and I are going to do from now on the co-pilot gets out you know what, get out and make sure I'm not going to back into a car. Whenever you're in a tight situation, yeah. the co-pilot gets out. You should have a cell phone or walkie-talkies. We'll put links to our walkie-talkies below. And that way you've got communication. These things are so big and these accidents are so common that you always need another person out. When in doubt, get out. For a solo traveler, if you don't know it, Paul and I were solo for a year mm -hmm. before we met. So if you're a solo traveler, you just do a 360 degree walk around before you leave. That way you know exactly where those obstacles are. Okay, so measuring is pretty simple. You just find the center line of your rear wheel, drop a tape measure right there and, and drag it to the back of your rig and there's your overhang. Right, but then actually maneuvering in a parking lot, we highly recommend what we did so you can actually see how your camper pivots. And again, this is gonna depend on what your setup is, how sharp of a turn you can make. Now with our rig, the maximum amount of turn that I could make without the camper hitting the back window, I only got about 18 inches of tail swing. So what you'll wanna do, first of all, is take your camper to a big parking lot. And if it has a line on it, that's even better because you wanna line up to the line 
and then make a sharp turn and actually measure and the way we did it was we laid a tape measure out sideways and mm -hmm. actually measure the arc of that swing. Well, I dropped a plum and marked the side of the camper and then we made the turn and I marked that point and yeah like I said it was 18 inches. I mean it's good to know even though you know we're recommending that you have a spotter or walk around it's good to know exactly how much clearance you need and that's gonna give you more comfort as you do these mm -hmm. maneuvers. Mm -hmm. Now later we we wanted to know okay what happens if somehow I could pull the the nose around at a 90 degree angle. We actually went to Blue Dog RV and thank you Blue Dog for this. They helped us out. They brought one of their forklifts over. We put it on the forklift and he just pulled it. But it was pivoting it so we could see exactly what was happening on the tightest turn possible. Yeah, and, 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 we, and we got eight feet out of it then. But it wouldn't be possible to do that hitch Not down. with our truck. I suppose somebody out there that, that can do a hard 90, you know, you might consider that if you're measuring and trying to figure that out. I mean, that's really the bottom line of tail swing is just know it's there, know it's on your blind side and give yourself plenty of room. And be aware, one of the things that we heard from <laughs> the hundreds of comments that we got from people who had done similar things is they were rushed mm -hmm. or they were tired. They, you know, they'd had a long day, you right. know, they didn't realize. So they weren't fully aware. And that's one of the things when you're driving a camper, particularly like, you know, <laughs> one of the bigger ones, and I really think anything that you're towing, you need to be full on alert. You cannot just lazy way your way through driving something that's hitched up. You need to be on full alert at all times. If you're not, you should not be driving. So we want to thank you for making us realize that we're not alone in doing this. The damage that we did to our rig was $25,000. That's the estimate we're looking at now. We will be out of our rig for weeks. What makes it so expensive in our case is that they have to, to take a big portion of the rear wall off to repair the body frame damage that I did. I snapped a couple of welds, pulled a lot of that aluminum away, so they've got to cut in there and piece in, weld in a new section of frame, body frame. Plus you can actually see from the inside, you know, some, the damage. And of course, and we have full body paint. Right, so it's going to have to be a, a paint job. So it was expensive, but not totaled, and we have very good confidence in Blue Dog RV yeah. and putting it back together. Yep. But we learned a lot about insurance and I think you should get your policy out, particularly um, if you're a full-timer. So what we had on our insurance is $750 coverage for housing. Now, if you <laughs> price hotels anywhere, you know that's not gonna be very long in a hotel, but if you know the RV industry, you know that typically if your rig goes in the shop, you're gonna lose it for weeks. Possibly months. Somebody in the comments said they put their rig into the shop in February. They can't apparently get the part that they need to finish this job, and, and uh, so they're out of their rig, and they're full-timers. We feel you. I mean, it's tough to be out of your rig. So if you're a full-timer and you don't have relatives scattered all over the nation, um, definitely look at your insurance because it's not much. We heard from someone that it was $1.67 over the year to change that housing coverage from $750 to $5,000. Right. That's yeah. going to depend on what state you live in. It's going to depend on what insurance you have. We have Progressive and we have not called them to see how much it's going to cost to up it. We <laughs> really don't want to rock that boat right now since we're dealing with the claim, but this is yeah. something that we are looking at. So if you think about your car insurance, typically it'll cover a rental for 30 days. And if you can get 30 days for a car repair, which generally never take that long, then you definitely want to think longer when you're looking at your RV insurance. I would think when we look at it, we're gonna look at probably $5,000 yeah, coverage. I think, I think that's a good target. We talked to somebody uh, who commented who had $9,000 coverage. So just choose what you think you're comfortable with. Of course, the whole RV industry tends to make you wait yeah, for that, months. That's pretty much the whole industry right now. <laughs> I've read that, that RV sales have gone up 600% in the last year. If you've got an insurance story, share it in the comment section below. We'd love to hear it, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time. Oh, no, help!